YouTube game. Welcome back to another show of Reading with Tugina. Yay! Here we have Tugina the turtle as always. She is our main character, main uh, company. <laughs> and then we have a uh, lion. We don't have a name for him, but... Maybe you could help us name him if you comment a name down below. Maybe you can name him. <clears throat> okay, so this is Lion and he is our guest today. His fur is so soft. Wish you guys could feel it. I'm sure you can see how soft it is. But there we have him and Chumina. They're gonna sit right there. And today, the books that we have are Anna at, the, Anna at the Art Museum by Hazel Hutchins and Gail Herbert and illustrated by Lil Crump. That's, that's the name, Lil Crump. <laughs> and then we also have Moby Dick, Chasing the Great White Whale by Eric A. Kimmel, paintings by Andrew Glass. Whoa, that looks so big. Look at him, he's so big. <laughs> All right, and today we have a new, like, thing, new thing that I want to start, which is having a joke and having a fun fact because just to add a little something before we get into the books so today the joke of the day will be um these, okay why did the photo go to jail why did the photo go to jail? It was framed. <laughs> that's great. That's a great joke, isn't it, everyone? So that's the joke for today. And we also have our fun fact. Um, speaking of whales, the heart of a blue whale which is the largest animal on earth, is five feet long and weighs 400 pounds. The whale in total weighs 40,000 pounds. Can you imagine how big that is? It's like, I don't even know what to compare it to because that's really big. Um, but just the heart of the whale, just his heart, which side is your heart? Ah. The just the heart of the whale is 400 pounds. 400 pounds. That is a lot. That is a lot. I cannot. Ah. I was gonna say I can't carry that. I can't even carry like 15 pounds. I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, and it's five feet long. Five feet long. Is that like as tall as a person? Four foot long. Five feet. Is that five foot? You know what? I, I don't know. But that, that is our fun fact of the day. And now each time that we are here to read books, we're going to have a fun fact and a joke. Let me just repeat the joke for you guys really quick. Is why did the photo go to jail? 
it's because it was framed. Now make sure to tell all of your friends and family that joke because I'm sure they will love it and they will make it will make them laugh and they will totally not get annoyed by it. So <laughs> let's get into the books. The first one we're gonna read. No, actually we're gonna read that one last or next. The first book we're gonna read is Moby Dick Chasing No Chasing the Great White Whale by uh, does it say Eric or Rick? Let's see. Eric A. Kimmel painting by Andrew Glass. And these are really beautiful paintings or pictures as you can see. Is this a sticker? What is it? I just noticed this was on here and I was like, that's so random. I didn't notice that was on there before. I can't take it off. It's stuck on there. I don't know who put it there. But let's let's see the story. All right. Call me Ishmael. Ishmael. When days start getting long again and time is moving slow, I set out for New Bedford Town, a whaling for to go. I don't know what that last sentence means, but it means something. These paintings, like I said before, they are really beautiful. Can you see how many like colors? Like his jacket to form just his jacket. Look at all those paint swatches and colors on there. That's so cool. So we have, okay, so. I checked into the Spouter Inn and shared the only bed with a harpooner named Hugig. He had a tattooed head. Oh. There's feet. I don't like feet. Or not. Nice. The Peku, Pequod, I don't know. The Pequod was our whaler's name. They seemed a jolly crew with Starbuck, Stub, and Flash the mates, Tash, Tego, and Dag. So that's all their names. Someone's name is Starbuck. That's kind of weird. But maybe they didn't have Starbucks yet back then. Maybe that's who it was named after, although I doubt it. Then Captain Ahab Then Captain Ahab came on deck. What happened to his leg? Twist was twas bitten off by Moby Dick. That's why the whale that's why the whalebone peg? That Parmesetti did me wrong. I'll hunt him through the sea. I promise when we meet again, it's Moby Dick or me. He nailed a doubloon to the mast and said, Look sharp and bold. Whoever spies the white whale first will earn this Spanish gold. So this guy has a... um, He has a grudge to settle with this Moby Dick. Who is Moby Dick, you ask? It's the white whale. So they're trying to hunt the whale now. Poor whale. Now listen how to catch a whale. We row up to its side, then stick a harpoon in its back and hang on for a ride. We cut the blubber from the beast and strip it to the bone. So in the end, Leviathan makes oil for lamps at home. So 
So this picture isn't going on right now, but it is. Um, it is what they're planning to do for the world. Sorry, I blanked out there for a minute. Happened a lot, but it's okay. Poor Q, Q. I can't say his name, bro. Poor Q Quig. Q Quig started feeling a sick. No, started feeling sick, and none of us knew why. We built a coffin just for him, but then he didn't die. We scanned the ocean day by day to any whale in sight. We spied some blue and gray ones too, but not a, but not a single white. Hitting the microphone, but they haven't spotted Moby Dick yet. I seek the white whale. I have cried to every passing ship until the Rachel came in sight. He'd given us the slip. There, Captain Webb, he took my boy. Oh, help me find him, friend, said Ahab. Don't have time for boys. My quest is near its end. It won't be long now, Ahab says. We're closing in, he knows. Then from the mast, we heard a cry. Ahoy, lads, thar she blows. Oh no, seems they spotted it. They have spotted Moby Dick, probably. His head rose high above the waters, a matter horn of white. The angle of his sickle jaw gave everyone a fright. Look at all his teeth. There's so many, so many teeth. We threw a harpoon at the whale, for he had time to blink. He smashed our whale boat with his tail and tossed us in the drink. Oh. He tossed them into the water. <laughs> Another day we tried again. Stubb yelled at us to row. I saw a man caught in the lines and carried down below. Uh oh. That's on them. They were trying to hunt the whale. Why go after it? I mean, the captain has his reasons, but let him go alone. And the whale did nothing but defend itself. On, Moby di oh, on Moby's back, the dead man lay, arising from the sea. His arms, his arms swung out to beckon us. Oh, shipmates, follow me. Hob stood, harpoon in hand, his rage burned like the sun. The weapon struck a tangled line, a shriek, and he was gone. What happened? Does he mean the whale or the person? I'm guessing the person. The whale smashed every single boat, enraged and furious. He turned around a great white mound and headed straight for us. He rammed the pickwad with his head. I heard the sighs and groans of all my friends and shipmates going down to Davy Jones. Who's Davy Jones again? Is it the guy with the tentacle face? Or is it the other guy? I don't remember, but I know him from Pirates of the Caribbean, or Caribbean, however you say it, but I forgot who he is, and that's probably not his original. 
So I am left to tell the tale as floating on the sea, adrift in quicks, quicks, coffin box, the Rachel rescued me. Was he the only one left? He was the only one left. The moral of this story is, as my sad tale has shown, respect all creatures, great and small, and leave the whales alone. That is right. That is right, everyone. You have to respect oh. <laughs> creatures, great and small. And I have to take my own advice because sometimes I want to kill the spiders. My mom doesn't let me kill the spiders, but I really want to because they're very creepy and I'm scared they're gonna bite me in so yeah but make sure to respect all creatures big and small yeah and oh there's a there's a glossary of things Okay, so it says who Davy Jones is. In sailor legend, the ruler of the sea, drowned sailors are said to have gone to Davy Jones' locker. Oh, was it when his ship, and then like the people were dead, but they were not dead. They could like, they were dead, but they weren't because they were moving. I think, anyway. I think this is also a novel. I think this is a novel too. Um, it was first published in 1851. And it tells the story of Moby Dick. So if, in, if you're into whales and you like harder reading levels, then you could probably check out the novel. Maybe you could even find it at your local library. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on to the next book, which is Anna at the Art Museum by Hazel Hutchins and Gail Herbert, illustrated by Lil Crump. Lil Crump. Anna at the Art Museum. Let's see here. What is this book about? Anna was not happy. Everything at the art gallery seemed old and boring. Girl, I feel you. I love to draw and I love to paint, but going to an art gallery? Although some people really love it. They really find the stories behind the art really interesting. And honestly, good for them because I would love to do that. It just doesn't work out. The paintings are really cool though. So if you've never been to the art museum, you should go to check it out. Anna would have to entertain herself. Roar, she said to the lion. Quite please, said the attendant. Peekaboo, she whispered to the baby. Careful, said the attendant. Oh, she almost knocked down the pot. When Anna carefully lifted her foot onto something that looked like it was for children, the attendant shook his head no and pointed at the sign. Yeah, do not touch. Because it is a piece of art. Ah, the green screen. It's going through. It's okay. It's just a green thing. So Anna and her mother had a talk. It was one they'd had earlier, but perhaps Hannah had not listened quite as closely as she should have. No shouting, no running, no climbing, no touching. 
all. Poor Anna. That's, that's okay. After that, Anna pretended she was a small bush in a forest of tall trees. One of the trees swayed to the side. There was something interesting beyond. Anna moved closer and closer. What did she find? Anna didn't know paintings could have alarms. Everyone turned and stared. Anna quickly ran away. Oh, she touched the painting. They have alarms? I did not know that. Or maybe this is like a really... Well, they have this painting on here, which is very, very uh, popular. Very well-known painting. I don't know what it's called, but maybe it's like a high-end museum. On the second floor, Anna found a window nook. While her mother looked at paintings, Anna gazed longingly out at the street and the harbor beyond. If only the museum could be turned inside out, or the world inside in. I mean, outside in. The world outside in. Inside in, that makes sense. In the next gallery, she pulled out her snack. But why was the attendant looking at her that way? Are you hungry? She asked. We can share. He was not hungry. No eating, he said with a firm voice. She could only drink at the water fountain in the hall. No eating. Yeah, that's the move. But sometimes you just need a snack to be happy. And then she saw the half-open door. When a door is half open, it is very hard not to wander, not to wonder what lies on the other side. Anna cautioned her mother softly. Oh, Anna cautioned her mother softly. No entry means we aren't allowed. But Anna began. Once again, the attendant was walking towards her. This time, however, he surprised her. It's not busy today. They might let you in. Would you like me to ask? It was like a secret workshop. Let's see what is beyond those doors. Here, art was studied, repaired, and cleaned. As years of grime were removed, the face of a young girl slowly emerged. It was a bored face, a grumpy face. Anna knew that young girl. He hurried to thank the attendant. She's just like me, Anna told him, or am I or or I'm just like her, which made the attendant smile. <laughs> he thinks she's bored and grumpy. And now, something had changed. On the floor above, Anna danced patterns of her own. She felt color swirl around her. But it had been a long afternoon. Even her mother was ready to go home. Please, how long were they in there? They took the fast way down pausing only long enough for Anna to whisper to the line, I'll be back. Ooh, I guess she liked it if she said she will be back. She probably, maybe she likes the art museum now. Then they pushed open the wide gallery doors and Anna skipped through, letting inside and out, letting inside and out, 
flow together. Oh, all the greens. <laughs> They're just bushes or trees. This is, well, that was the end of the story, but now we're going to do about the art. These are just some of the art, um, art that was shown in the book. Some of the art that was shown in the book, I was thinking like frames, paintings, but just art. So they're all of it. We can just go one by one very quickly. The first one is Head of a Woman, circa 1650s to 1700s. That is, sorry, that is this one right there. A little bit hard to see. Here we go. The next one is Nubian Tribute presented to the King. Tomb of Uy. and I'm not gonna read all the years because there's a lot. And then there's Neb Newman supervising estate activities, Tomb of Nebuna. And then there's the lion one is the panel with striding lion, which you know I just saw in the book. Kind of hard to see that. They're very small, but the third Uchikawa as Yaozo as a daimyo standing under a maple tree. And then the first Naku, Nakamo, Nakamura Nakazo as a samurai standing near a willow tree. Then there's the Kabuki actor Ichigawa Danjiro. These are all Japanese. And then there's Mother and the Children of the Year. At the Year. Sorry if I pronounce those names wrong. They're all like Japanese names or words. And yeah. Then there's the Adolescence. Oh, geez, there's another page. Adoles Adolescence or Sisters. Then there's the broken eggs, the, or then there's the forest of Ponto Bert. I probably said that wrong. Then there's the western forest. That is this row right here. You can't really see the bottom ones. They're pretty dark. But then there's the supper at Mouse. Then this one's the one I was talking about. It's the scream that's what it's called that one right there it's very popular then there is regatta at saint then there is bridge over a pond of water lilies then approach to venice that's this very last line over here And then, the next page, there's a lot more. I'll just put the most notable ones that I can see. Try this one. This one's pretty cool too. The portrait of young, of a young woman, which is this one right here. And then the other notable one, I feel like everyone has seen this, is um, it could be called Under the Wave of Kanagawa, or mostly known as the Great Wave, I think. Just that one down there. All right, and then there's these other beautiful ones, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> so yes, that is the end of this book. And that is all the books that we have for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed them. So we read Anna at the Art Museum by Hazel Hutchins and Gail Herbert and illustrated by Lil Crump. And we also read Moby Dick Chasing the Great White Whale 
by Eric A. Kimmel, paintings by Andrew Glass. This one has such beautiful paintings. I've said that so many times. Oh, look at those colors. The use of color to make like shading is very, very cool. So that is it for today, everyone. Thank you for joining me and to Nina. She's still here. She's just a little hidden, a little hidden today. That's okay. The lion's still there too. But yes, this book reminds me that you can get um, art museum passes. You can get um, other museum passes at the library as well. They give you passes for free. You just have to rent them. And then they give you a certain amount of days that you can use them in. And then obviously you have to return them. But they're free. You don't have to pay to get into the museum. I think it's good depending on which pass you get for four people, I think. But yes. So um, they're very cool. Definitely if you have not been to the art museum, yet the any art museum the tacoma art museum which is the one closest to me um if you haven't been to the art museum yet you should totally go i know i said i didn't personally like art museums but i think maybe it's just because i've been to the one that's close to me several times and yeah <laughs> I've been there several times and I've already looked at everything, but if you have not been, you should definitely go check it out. Maybe you might like it. You might like the stories behind all the paintings and yeah, maybe you can make your own story to go with the painting. It could give you inspiration, guys. So yes, definitely check out your art museum or any museum. And yeah, there's free passes at the library. You just have to maybe go ask or go look for them and they should be there at your disposal. So yes, check out your local library to get books as well. Any type of book, harder books, easier books. There's movies, there is magazines, uh, any type of books you want. So yes, go to your library and have a good rest of your Sunday, everyone. Me and Chugina will see you here next Sunday at 12.30. Yay! Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Chugina says bye-bye. And we love you all. It's a heart. It's kind of a wonky heart, but it's a heart. You can go like this. Or like this. It's probably better. Oh no. Oh no. There you go. That's better. Okay, I give up. But yes, bye.